Hey, what's up guys? It's Sam here with Custom PC Review. And um, today I just want to show you guys a quick demonstration of the Gigabyte UEFI. And uh, I'm running off the Gigabyte Z77X UD3H. So, um, like I said, this is actually a, a new thing for Gigabyte. Um, they've originally had the uh, hybrid BIOS, whatever they had. It was kind of like a mixture of uh, UEFI and the fact that you can load 3 terabyte hard drives on there. But it was still like sort of just the traditional BIOS with the, uh, you know, non, you can't use the mouse or anything like that. So now this is a new system. They've also got the 3D BIOS, which is actually really cool. I'm going to pull that up. Um, from this mode right here, you just hit F1 and uh, you'll pull up the 3D BIOS, which is really cool. Um, you know, kind of more of a basic, um, you know, picture for, for people who, who don't know what, you know, each button means or people who just want like a cool... I guess sort of gimmicky. I, I don't know if it's gimmicky, but some people might like this. Some people might not, but you've got the your uh, processor frequency here. You've got the base clock. You've got the memory uh, frequency there. And um, everything is just sort of going to be highlighted whenever you uh, go on there. There's tooltip descriptions, which is really nice. And uh, kind of give you an idea of where each, I guess, function from the UEFI uh, does, which is kind of cool. So, you know, in the here expansion slots, you've got um, SATA controls, you got HCI mode and all that stuff. But I'm a little old school, so I kind of like this regular kind of UEFI there, which is, um, you know, it depends on what you like. Anyway, um, show you guys what's in the BIOS here. Um, you know, it, it's kind of like the traditional Gigabyte BIOS. There are a couple new features in there, but I'm just going to do a quick overclock in here. And uh, for now, I'm just going to run you through some of the BIOS features. you got the 3D power, which there's tons of features for very, very precise overclocking control and power delivery. got CPU uh, vCore right here. And this is where most of your overclocking is going to happen. Um, you know, right there. And DRAM voltage control, of course, the DRAM. Probably not going to touch that for the most part. Uh, PC health, obviously you've got... All your fan controls there and uh, there's actually quite a bit of four pin fan headers on the uh, Z77X UD3H which is really nice because you could set that to use um, uh, automatic fan controllers which is great and uh, here we got the system all the information there BIOS features right here and uh, peripherals so power management, and that's pretty much it. So uh, what we're actually going to do is we're going to do an overclock on this uh, pro uh, this motherboard using the Ivy Bridge processor. Uh, it's going to be a i5-3570K, however overclocking a i7-3770K or even a Sandy Bridge, um, you know, uh, older generation, you know, 2700K, 2600K, 2500K. Uh, it's going to be very similar to what we're doing here. So um, there, the easiest way to overclock this is really, for, well, first thing you got to do is you'll want to um, keep the memory at, you know, whatever default it is. That's the way I like to do it. Um, obviously, you can also set it to Profile 1 XMP, or you could do it manually, whatever you want. But um, we have it disabled right now because we just want to check for stability uh, when overclocking. So first thing I do is just go into the advanced frequency settings. As you can see here, the base clock is set at 100, but uh, from my experience, it actually sets it to about 100.9 or so um, if, you, if you don't adjust this uh, CPU clock ratio to like uh, over 42 multiplier, I think. So um, the way you can do this is you can either adjust the CPU clock ratio, and you can set it to something like 42. I think the max I've set it to was actually 48. Uh, after that point, the overclock actually got too hot because Ivy Bridge, um, Ivy Bridge is actually runs really hot. So um, even with my giant Fantex cooler that I have here, I don't know if you can hear the sound uh, from the three 140 millimeter fan that, that are running on the test bench, but even with the large Fantex PH-TC14PE, I was getting like over 90 degrees Celsius. So that was definitely a no-go for me. Um, you know, so 48 was just pretty much the max I would even run. 
uh, especially e even on an open air test bench, even with this massive cooler. So um, it's definitely recommended that you run something like 45, which is 4.5 gigahertz, totally respectable overclock for uh, an Ivy Bridge processor like the 3570K. So um, this is the first way you could do it. Just set it to 45 right here. And uh, that is pretty much it. Just set it to 45 there. Um, you'll want to, you can keep these on auto. I, I usually turn the thermal monitor off and the uh, turbo power limit. I just set these to 250 each. And uh, yeah, and that's pretty much going to be your overclock there. You've got to adjust the voltage a little bit. Now, I usually set the CPU PLL voltage to 1.65. Uh, I find that to, to give you some more stability on your overclock. Um, and it lowers the voltage a little bit to let your uh, CPU run a bit cooler. Um, not a big deal. If you set it to auto, that's fine. 1.8 voltage, uh, 1.8 volts is fine. Uh, CPU vCore, you can keep that at auto if you want. Uh, However, I, I found that auto usually has a higher voltage. However, if you do set it to manual, it will always run at that voltage. So it's definitely going to be up to you. With auto, if you have all your power saving features on, like uh, C1E and stuff like that, um, your CPU will automatically lower the voltage when it's not necessary um, because it will actually downclock the CPU. So if you don't have that on, um, you might want to set that to uh, you know, whatever you want. So for 4.8 gigahertz, I've actually arrived to 1.35 that works. Um, for everything else, I'm not quite certain, but you can always go back and test it. Um, you know, obviously set the voltage, go into Windows, run a stress test. You know, if it fails a stress test, bump up the voltage a little bit. Otherwise, you can always set it on auto. And uh, I found that this is probably the easiest way to do it um, for that. So that's pretty much going to be the settings that you will need. But um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to overclock it a little differently. And I'm going to overclock it using the turbo multipliers. And I'm going to uh, overclock it using uh, the auto voltage with the power saving. So that way, you know, it's better for, say, something like a, um, it's better for like a 24-7 overclock. So what I'm going to do here is just set it back to 34. Now that was the original first way you can overclock it which is just directly, your CPU is always going to be at 4.5 gigahertz, no power saving options, um, and things like that. So the way we're going to do it right now is we're just going to set the CPU clock ratio back to 34. We're going to overclock it using the turbo multipliers, uh, which is actually something I've carried over from Sandy Bridge. It, it worked very well. So um, here's what we're going to do. Turbo ratio, one core active, we're going to set that to 45. And two core, set it to 45. Three core, 45. And uh, oops bring that back here and four core just set it to 45 keep turbo power limit and core current limit at 250 each and that really doesn't matter um, down here CPU uh, C1E just leave that on auto C3 C6 leave that on auto thermal monitor keep it disabled you don't really need that we will be monitoring temperatures obviously as we go and um, because it's actually not that you know intense of a overclock we're just going to go ahead and set it to the XMP Profile 1. And we are using uh, 1866 memory. So as you can see there, it already bumped it up to 1867. So other than that, that's pretty much it. Remember again, we are setting the voltage on auto. And uh, that will allow the CPU to actually down, or that will allow the V-Core to actually um, lower itself. Otherwise, it's going to stay at whatever you set. So if you set it at 1.35, it's going to try it's best to stay at 1.35. And uh, I found that gigabytes power delivery is actually very, very accurate. So if you do set it at 1.35, it'll stay there. So um, definitely not, you know, a little different from other motherboards out on the market. Um, for everything else, just pretty much, you just have to set it on auto. And, um, you know, this stuff is all for, for um, people who are actually, like, really into doing as much overclocking as possible. Um, you know, they probably have water cooling systems and things like that. But for, you know, just a regular air-cooled system, it's probably going to be unnecessary. So we're just going to turn that back into restart and um, see where it goes from there. So hopefully it boots up for us. And 
we'll be able to check our overclock in a little bit. Alright guys, so it seems like our system is booted up. We're going to fire up core temp right here. And uh, I don't know how difficult it is to see that. But it's showing at about... The temperatures are actually not too good. It's about 31 Celsius and it's, it's kind of fluctuating a little bit um, because the, the CPU is actually clocking up and clocking down a lot. But um, that's that. We're going to move into using, we're going to use ADA64. Actually, we really like this uh, stress test lately. I've actually been using it a lot. So we will run the system stability test. Keep all these checked right here. And this actually stresses the CPU, the FPU, the cache, and the system memory all at the same time. And um, I actually find it a really good stability test. So we're just going to start that and let it start running. As you can see over here, the CPU usage instantly jumps to about 100%. And um, just monitor that a little bit. CPU Z right here, we're going to fire that up. And uh, you're going to see that the processor is actually currently running at 4.539, 4.540 4 gigahertz or so. And that's because the, uh, the Gigabyte motherboard automatically turns the base clock to 100.9 megahertz. So um, I've actually left that on auto and uh, it's been working just fine. So no problems there. As you can see, the core voltage is at about 1.332 volts. So this is what the auto would set. Um, I've actually had success running this processor at 4.8 gigahertz, a little over 4.8 gigahertz with the core voltage at 1.35. Once it loads, um, it drops down to about 1.34 uh, something. So. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Right there, it's running the stress test and it's overall doing a good job. As you can see right here, the maximum temperature is actually a little, high, a little higher than I'd like. Um, going up to about 87 degrees here. And I think that's a little high, so I might just back off the overclock a little bit for this system. Um, I like keeping all the overclocks down at about 4.5, uh, I mean, sorry. I like to keep the uh, overclocks with a maximum temperature of about uh, under, I'd, I'd like to see like under 75 actually. So uh, definitely would not be overclocking this uh, processor up to 4.5 gigahertz, maybe 4.2 or something of that sort. But you guys get the idea. And uh, that's pretty much it. So that's the quick BIOS tour, quick uh, overclocking tour of that and uh, oh also probably want to show you guys the last method of overclocking which not super recommended or not really recommended at all but it's with the easy tune 6 utility so um, this is probably going to be the easiest way to overclock um, either hit one two or three and you you're going to overclock your system and that's actually really easy um, I found that one works Two works and three is actually unstable, um, and that's just through my testing uh, till now. So, um, and one gets you up to 4.08 gigahertz, two gets you up to 4.33, and three gets you up to 4.58. And uh, as you can see right here, we're about at 4.54, and um, it's completely stable so far. And actually, you can get up to about 4.8, completely stable. At which point, the temperature just goes out of control. So. Um, that's pretty much it. Been about three minutes and looks like the maximum temperature for core two has hit 87 degrees Celsius. Um, so Ivy Bridge definitely runs a lot hotter than Sandy Bridge. And um, there we have it. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, just want to thank Gigabyte for sending this motherboard out for review. Um, full review definitely in the link below. And this is actually going to be attached to the review. Um, kind of like a supplemental video but um yeah and thanks thank you all for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video hey how's it going guys it's sam back here again with another video for you guys and today i am going to be announcing uh, another giveaway because i really like to hook you guys up 
And uh, what I've got is the PH-F140TS fan by Fantex, along with the Fantex uh, PH-TC14PE CPU cooler. So um, as you guys all know, this is probably one of the best CPU coolers uh, on the market today. It, it, it certainly is the biggest. 